Welcome to the Grow Your Business and Grow Your Wealth podcast with Gary Helt. Gary is an expert in helping business owners put together a plan that will provide a better future for their businesses, themselves, and their families. On the podcast, Gary interviews other professionals who share his vision, and together they share secrets and strategies any business owner can use to build a better financial foundation for your business and your life. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, our guest is Justin Goodbread. He is the CEO of Heritage Investors and the founder of Financially Simple. Welcome, Justin. Thanks, Gary. Looking forward to it. So tell us, you you, you got a lot of things going on, multiple businesses. Um, you know, you, you've built up multiple businesses, sold businesses. What made you get into, you know, the business world? At age 15, my dad gave me an ultimatum, Gary. He said, son, have a job by Friday or don't come home. <laughs> and it was he's an old country boy. And I laugh about the story every time he says it. But literally, I was i was uh, 15 years old on a Monday. I was going to be 16 on a, on a Friday. And he taught me a very important principle of this course of the week. His rule was get a job by Friday, don't come home. But here's the rules. You can't work fast food. You can't work for a grocery store. And you can't work for anybody who knows me. And in a small town with the name of Good Bread, everybody knew Alan Goodbread. So after literally a week of trying to figure out where I was going to work so I could actually come home, right. I picked a lawnmower up, walked down the street, an old country road, dirt road, pushed mowed one of our long distant neighbor's yard, made 40 bucks, dude, in like three hours time, come home, I'm sitting there all showered up. My dad comes home from working for the Georgia port, Gary, he was stinky, sweaty. And he looked at me, so he says, he said, man, you look good. I said, yes, sir. I got a job. He said, really, what'd you do? I said, well, I cut so-and-so yard. He said, he didn't know you. He said, good. How much money did you make? I said, 40 bucks. He said, how long did it take you? I said, two and a half hours. He said, here's your principal, son. I went to work all day long today. You made more than me in two and a half hours. If you learn how to run a business, you'll never have to work for the man. And instantly my mom was at, my mom had the formal education. She came out and they taught us business. That, that business, Gary, evolved. It grew, 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 grew. I sold it whenever I met my bride at age 21, sold it and moved to East Tennessee. And it started and sold two more businesses. And now I own three and we're trying to take over the world. It's great. We're loving life. That's awesome. So, you know, um, you know, your books are, are back behind you. The um, most recent one that you that you just put out is uh, Your Baby's Ugly. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Check out this pic. I mean, look yeah. at that picture there, you know, <laughs> it's uh, so Your Baby's Ugly. My dad told me this principle. I talk a lot about my mom and dad because I was homeschooled most of my life back whenever homeschoolers walk up to the push door and pull. That was me. You know, I was right. a kid that didn't know how to read signs. And this is before everybody went through COVID and everybody became homeschoolers. It was only the weird ones that was like me that was homeschooled. Right. And uh, he said, son, he says statements. He say, son, you never tell a woman her baby's ugly. Sometimes you have to. And if you do, you better duck because you're going to slap you or you better run because they get a broom after you. Right. The principle being that he taught us is that each of us hold on to something that we think is beautiful, that when others see it, it's not. And, you know, Gary, I've had the opportunity to consult thousands of business owners nationally with our firm for Heritage Investors and Heritage Business Advisors. We're ranked in the top 0.025% of all financial advisors, business advisors nationally. We're in the top 100 out of 350,000 advisors. So I get to talk to a lot of people. And brother, there is not a business owner out there that if you ask them what they think about their business, they don't start initially smiling, beaming, bragging on it because it's often our identity. Right. But statistically, whenever we get to the point in life where we need to realize equity, remember about 80% of our net worth is tied up in our business, this illiquid asset. And whenever we need to realize equity, whenever we get moved from illiquid to liquid, we often are faced with this idea that our business isn't worth what we think it's worth because candidly, no one wants to buy a job and the vast majority of people out there have a job. There's a statistic from the academies of mergers and acquisitions advisors, Gary, that blew my mind years ago when I first read this. And I said, someone needs to deal with this. And that is there's 5.3 million small businesses in the country that, that employ people. And that's people who produce less than 10 million annual revenue. Only 4%. Only 4% of business owners sell their business for what they think they're worth. Only 16% of those businesses actually transact. 
So we're dealing with a huge amount of people that own businesses. They call it the gray tsunami because of baby boomers right now, right? We're highly affluent. We have high incomes, but our business is not attractive to anybody because we've ran it as a job. And so that's why I wrote the book, Your Baby's Ugly. So you do, you know, you said that you, you know, talk to many business owners and, and you're doing consulting with them to help them, you know, build these, you know, businesses up. Can you, you know, tell us some of, you know, what, what you're doing to help them? Sure, no problem. So we back, basically backward engineered the process. Um, so I've already gone through this process personally three times on how to, on building a business and selling it, taking equity and doing something else. And whenever you go through the process of selling a business, at some point there's a value, there's a term value placed on. I knew as a CPA would know there's multiple definitions for value. You can have fair market value, fair value, book value, enterprise value, liquidation value. There's so many different values. I keep going on and on of these different types of values. But each of us place a value on ourselves as business owners. But ultimately in that transaction, somebody else is going to place a value on it. They're going to look at it objectively, and they're going to try to figure out both the tangible and the intangible assets. They're going to know how much cash you have in the bank, plus they're going to try to figure out what are your what is your goodwill? What is your systems worth? What's that client list worth? What's that email system worth? What is your team worth? Various components. So going through this myself, I'm like, there's got to be a methodology. So I downloaded and purchased about every valuation software out there that you could buy, purchase. Backwards engineered it came up with about 256 measurements across the world of evaluations that evaluators could potentially look at. I take that software and I broke it down to eight key areas of business. There's eight areas of business that I cover in this particular book that if we understand the methodology of value, we can focus in on those eight areas and start growing those eight areas, which ultimately grow the intangible asset and the tangible asset, giving us a higher multiple or factor that we use for valuation. So I looked at the eight areas as, as planning, leadership, sales and marketing, people, operations, finance, and legal. So eight key areas of business. And so what I did through the book, and I give this in each of those eight chapters, is I broke each of those eight areas down to sub subsegments and then give you as a business owner and your listeners the ability to ask questions as a valuation expert would do, as CBA, as you, you and I both know, right. would take and value this. The cool thing is, is as you're going through this exercise throughout the first nine chapters of the book, you're now identifying the weaknesses in your business just the same way as a valuation expert will. Right. And now you're able to use implementation, the very last chapter of the book, you're able to implement what you've already self-analyzed in the, in the previous chapters. You're able to implement it and drive a process which will increase the value of your business if you implement the areas that you see that are weak. Right. Now, do you help coach people through through this process? I do. Actually, our team does. Um, so we have a team in our heritage business advisors, of evaluation experts, our value experts. So I have a I have three credentials. I'm a certified financial planner. Everybody kind of knows what that is. It's a pretty big designation mark. I'm a certified value growth advisor. So that's a credentialing that brings in a lot of what you learned through the CPA course, a lot of what I've learned through the CFA course, our CP, CFP course, and some other disciplines that says, here's how you move the multiple in a business. And then I'm also a certified exit planning advisor. In fact, I've won several awards there nationally of helping business owner build exit or succession plans so that they can actually realize the value of the business. So Whenever we meet with an individual, a business owner, what we're saying is we want to know where you're at today so we can give a rough assessment of where the business value is today. We want to know what their wealth gap is. How much money do you need in order for you to walk away from this business, right? Mm -hmm. How much money does your family need? So oftentimes, you and I were talking before the show, if, if, if I'm used to, if I say I'm making $200,000 out of my business, more than likely, it's much more than that by the time we factor in the trips and the cell phones and the cars and all this other stuff that we use as business expenses. So we need to normalize the numbers to figure out what is it that we're truly living on. And so if let's say it's 400,000 a year, I need $10 million earning 4% guaranteed income from some sort of a product or an investment account or something, some sort of income. So with the rule of four is what in the financial world you would use and I would use. So that would give me 400,000 a year. Well, whenever I start talking like this, business owners now are saying, holy cow, I've got this asset that's giving me a distribution rate of 20, 30, 40%. 
there's no way I'm going to be able to replace that with rental property or an equity position. So what we do is we say, okay, but you can't carry the same risk, what's called company-specific risk of your business, indefinitely. It's going to kill you, or you're going to end up getting to a point where your business is going to go to atrophy, which so many people do. So what we're looking at is saying, how can we grow that value um, uh, through a methodology, through systems, through processes, so that we can see, okay, today is worth a million, next year is worth two, the next year is worth four, the next, how can we systematically grow it? So what we say is we want to teach business owners, and we do, not everybody can do it, not right. mind you, but we want to teach right. business owners, they can double their net worth every three to five years, and you can do it as a business owner. Wow, that's, I mean, that's pretty powerful, because, you know, most of the time, you know, as a business owner, you know, you're thinking, it's like, okay, I keep, keep growing by a tiny bit, um, and I know that I've run across a, a ton of business owners that obviously think their business is worth more than it is. Um, yeah. So I think that that with your book, showing them kind of where some of the flaws are in their thinking helps kind of, uh, I'm going to say, bring, bring them back down to earth and then before you can start helping build them back up. When you guys start working with someone, how long is the is the process, um, you know, kind of from the time you get them to, to the time they sell? So we walk through a very structured process within our company. Not every, not every company in the valuation expert or growth world works this way. But in our process, we always start on every single person through a written financial plan. Just like you would do from, you know, if someone comes in and you're taking over some tax work or some compliance work or even some, even some um, value growth work yourself and tax planning work, oftentimes we need to make sure the home is prepared first. It's when you know, I grew up on the ocean in South Georgia, Gary. I love going offshore fishing. I can remember one time they forgot to put the plug in the back of the boat. And so we were taking on water. Well, that doesn't help you very much yeah. when you're in the ocean, right? right? So we have to make sure the home front is prepared first because, as you know, as a tax professional, taxes is one of the greatest wealth drivers, which is why what you do with tax planning is so valuable for folks, right? So we want to make sure that the tax front is done good at home, but that's going to bleed over into the business. See, whenever we get to the business aspect, what we're turn, teaching people how to do is that you don't pull every bit of income out of the business. You need to reinvest it in proper areas of the business, more likely planning and marketing are two areas that are often weak for people in their business. So we wanted to redeploy some cash in that business. Well, as we're doing this, depending on their goals, remember that wealth gap that I talked about, if we need to bridge that wealth over a five-year period, it may take us a full five years to bridge this gap. If they say, hey, I just want to change this little short course correction, it may take 12 to 18 months just to sure up some basic areas. Here's what happens. We typically start with a 12 to 18-month contract. And then after that first process, they're like, dude, my net worth increased by this much, or my business is this much better, or I have more time, or I have more NOI, net operating income, or I have more whatever you want to fill in the blank. What happens if we do this again? And we're walking through the second process over again. So we often don't have that much attrition until they go to sale. So we have seven customers that now that are going through transaction mode. In other words, they're trying to sell before year end, and they're getting best in class multiples right now. And it's like, they're like, dude, we can't believe this has happened over the last four, five, six years. No, get it. They have a lot of hard work, Gary. This is not easy what I'm talking about, right. okay? Right. And not everybody will do this. It's very tough. But these for, my, these clients are now reaching the point where like, dude, where some clients are selling for a million bucks, they're getting six, the same industry. Wow. Where some clients who are sit doing, we had a client who's putting water lines in the dirt, literally putting water lines in the dirt for municipality. There's no, there's really no value there from the initial onset, but we took it and structured it, built it, built process, built sources, did those eight areas that I cover in the book. And now they're getting an offer that is pretty amazing that they're going to be able to move on to the next chapter of their life. So it depends on the client. Every case is going to be different, but I've written the book in such a way to where you don't truly need a consultant right away. Okay. You may be able to go through the book itself and self-diagnose areas as a business owner to start thinking. Now, Rick Edelman, you may know that name, Rick Edelman. He's one of the top financial advisors, if not the number one in the country. He wrote a, an article. He wrote a little brief for the book, and he said, quote, this could be the best book on entrepreneurship I've ever read. Now, Rick Edelman has seven New York Times bestsellers, okay, and he's read a lot of books. When he read this, he said, Justin, this is masterfully done. Not only do you teach people how, 
you show them why, and you explain the ramifications if they don't. So this, this is a guide more than it is a sit down and read that you could utilize in your business to help you grow the value of your company. That's great. Now, do you do um, any type of a, a regular, you know, podcast or anything like that, that, that kind of piggybacks off this book? Sure. So we have Financially Simple is one of my companies. Financially Simple is my baby. It is my baby. That's what I really love. I love teaching. Um, Gary, I would even challenge you. I challenge any listener who's listening to this, go into the Financially Simple Experience. It's a blog. It has over 1,500 articles. We have almost 400 or so podcasts right now that's out there. We have videos on YouTube. The reason why I received top 100 status is because of the influence that I've been pushing through this business advisory world. I believe within all my heart, Gary, the more that we give away, the more we receive. I believe that with all my heart. I'm an old country boy. I grew up on the farm in South Georgia. My dad told me the story one time. He said, son, there was an old farmer who gave corn away every year to his, to his friends, but then he would go and win the blue ribbon at this county fair. And his friends are always pissed because they're like, dude, how in the world are you beating us every year? We're planting the same corn you gave us. And he's like, guys, you don't get it. I have to have my corn on your farms in order to make my corn better. The idea being the more we give away, the more it comes back to us. So my challenge to anybody who's listening to this is go to Financially Simple. I teach 100% of what we tell clients day in, day out. And if you can find a subject that we've not covered, let me know. It's pretty powerful. It's a very broad breadth of information that somebody can listen to, and hopefully they can apply it. If they can't, they need help. Just like I have a coach for my business. I'm sure you have a coach for your business. We have a team that can help coach business owners to grow the value of their companies. Right. You know, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up about, about the coach because, you know, many times, you know, on this podcast, I've, I've preached about, you know, having a team um, and making sure that, that you have a, a team of advisors that are helping you. Um, and, and, you know, you would be another great addition to somebody's team and helping them because, again, just like, you know, a, a professional football team, I mean, you know, you can't just have the quarterback quarterback's got to have the offensive line and the receivers and everybody else. Um, and if you don't have that team and they're not working together and they're not communicating, you know, you're not going to succeed. I don't know how, how great, you know, your one person is, but you can't do it all, you know, by yourself. Um, so, so I think that that's something that's, that's very important it is, is having that, that coach that's there to help you because they're looking at the big picture and they're trying to help keep keep you going down where you need to go. What are some of the the you know common mistakes that you're seeing business owners make you know before they start working with you guys? Oh wow, I could go all day long on this one, buddy. <laughs> um, the first one is is they don't know where they're going. It's a very common mistake. So many business owners were a really good technician. Right. or they were working somewhere else and they said, hey, I can do it better than the business I'm in now. So they go out and start a business and they stay in that technician role. It, it's okay to operate as a technician, whatever the trade or service that you're in, whether you're an attorney or putting an HVAC, it doesn't matter. You can serve as a technician for a certain point and you can run a good lifestyle business where you're basically making enough money for you to feed your family. And some people like that, you have maximum flexibility. But whenever you're trying to get to where you're creating value or enterprise value, you've got to move from that technician role through the manager role to the entrepreneur role, to that business, true business owner role. And so where one of the fails is, is they don't have a plan. They don't know where they're at. They really can't identify where they're at today, much less do they know where they exactly they want to be. So that'd be like you, Gary, saying, hey, I'm going on vacation. I'm like, where? You're like, I don't know, but I'm leaving on this day. Where are you going? I don't know. Well, I'm going to go that direction. For how far? I don't know. Well, that's what happens in business. So that's one of the common mistakes. Number one. Number two is marketing. Now, marketing is interesting because we business owners are not afraid to spend money. We'll spend money in a heartbeat on something that we can see a benefit from. Hiring a consultant is one of those benefits that many people spend money on. I highly challenge you to do it. I have multiple consultants who help me, and I'm running a national, national franchise almost, a national level business. So having a coach is good way to spend money, but marketing, we, we approach marketing the same mindset as we do maybe hiring a coach in that we'll spend money and want to see an instant return. Yeah. 
or we'll hear our friend who has a similar business. Maybe they put some ad in a paper, or maybe they did some mailer, or they did some catalog, or they did some Facebook ad, or they did some seminar, or whatever it is. We've seen them all. Mm -hmm. So what business owners will do is we'll throw money at marketing and it doesn't work. And then so we cross our arms and say, well, marketing doesn't work. No, it's not true. So one of the ways that where we start seeing and teaching is it's a door problem. They don't have a sales pipeline built or a marketing funnel built, nor do they have a quality control physician built to keep throughput moving happen, to let the customer cycle back through and go through the process again. So business planning is one marketing. And, and I'm on marketing, just keep this in mind. Apple, the big company that everybody knows, trillion dollar company, spends $2 billion be billion dollars a year in marketing and everybody on the planet knows who apple is so mm -hmm. if marketing doesn't work and then why in the world they spend a two billion dollars because it works we as a small business community just doesn't understand how it works for us specifically and therefore we give on we give up on one of the biggest things that can help drive our value of our company so those are two out of the eight areas that we see a common mistake happening yeah i think lots of times you know what you said about you know marketing and it's like okay i put an ad in there and it, and, you know, I didn't see any response to it, you know, type thing. And then lots of times, you know, I'll ask the, the business owner, it's like, okay, well, how did you track it? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, when they came in and it's like, well, do you have some formal process? And I think that that's kind of, you know, you've touched on that multiple times, you know, in here and in the book about, you know, needing to have those processes, because if you don't have those, you know, you can't track it. And well, if you're not- Gary, take it a step further than what you just said. If I want to truly be a business owner and you want to be a business owner, then what we should be able to do is take our whole company and boil it down to three to five measurements, the entire company. So I call these critical success factors, okay? We want to be able to, through our whole systems, our whole process, say, these three numbers are up to five, most, mostly time three. These three numbers will tell me the health of my company going forward, backward, and present. In order to come up with those three numbers, you're going to have to have multiple KPIs, key performance indicators, performance indicators, and key results indicators. In our companies, we track almost 200 different indicators. But I can look at these three factors, these three numbers, and tell you whether or not our Q4 is going to be just as good as Q3. Or if our Q2 is going to be is, is trailing behind Q3 because it's three numbers. To make that work, you have to think McDonald's. Yeah, the hamburger place. And whenever you go to McDonald's, it may not be one of your favorite. I like Chick-fil-A. I mean, that's God's sandwich right there. But you, 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 you go to Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, and you look in the, the window through drive through You're sitting there watching them. And most of the time, they have a high schooler cooking French fries. And whenever I was in Malta a few years ago, I went to McDonald's, and there was a high schooler cooking French fries. Whenever you go to Japan, there's going to be a high schooler cooking French fries. That's powerful because here you have somebody 16, 17, 18, 19 years of age cooking, using a tool that could burn the establishment to the ground. But yet everywhere around the world, you get the same flavor French fry because it's systematized, it's quantified, there's measurements on it. They have the same structure in place. And so when you take it to your accounting firm or my business advisory firm, we work doing the exact same thing. The only way we're going to receive maximum value is through systems and processes, all giving us those one, two or three different indicators that we need to track. Right. I think something that's, that's important, you know, with that also is paying someone like yourself or me or, or, or a business coach to help you do these things because you're not going to be able to do it all on your own. You know, maybe after you get things set up, yes, you'll be able to look for it. And I think too many business owners make the mistake of not being willing to, to pay for that kind of stuff. And I think yeah. that that's important. I think, I think when you were talking about this, I don't know if it was on the podcast or right before, but I think that we need a board of advisors. I think we need, we need to have on that board of advisors, you need a good tax, tax planning CPA, razor sharp. You need a good business attorney. I'm talking about chainsaw sharp. I mean, chainsaw sharp. In other words, you don't want to run a chainsaw. They wear you out. But whenever you use them, you don't be stinking sharp. So it cuts in the wood. You need a good planner. Not a stockbroker, not an insurance sales. You need a fiduciary planner. You need some consultants in your corner. And they could be business consultants. They could be emotional consultants, family coaches. You need somebody. See, if we look at, if we look at successful, when I'm going to use that term broad, big picture, and we see, pick somebody out there, a big Fortune 500 company, Elon Musk, if you will. 
He's got consultants. The president has consultants. The top athletes in the world, Michael Phelps had 13 coaches at one point. And you have these top athletes and these top business professionals have a litany of coaches. But now we entrepreneurs think we can do it all by ourselves. How foolish. How foolish. See, we don't know, you know, someone asked me, suggested, what are you scared of? I'm, I'm scared of sharks, number one. I don't like them because they, <laughs> they eat you. I'm scared of pineapple on my pizza because that's just wrong. That's yeah. not going to be in heaven. Yeah. Okay. And I know I'm right. Evidently, you agree with me on that. That's just wrong. Right. And I'm scared of not knowing what I don't know. Yeah. Because what I don't know is what's going to blow me off the horse. It's what's going to, guess what's going to sideline me and going to set me back in business perhaps a decade. And that's where somebody who's wide open can tell Michael Phelps, hey, buddy, your elbow's not pointing the right direction on your stroke. Straighten it up a little bit and him win that many national uh, world records. Right. What, you know, we're, you know, would say we're coming out of COVID, but it seems like we're going back into it. How has that affected your business? You know, COVID 2020 was the best year we ever had. We have business owners that had the best years they've ever had. And now we're, we have clients who are coming to us and saying, we had the worst year ever. See, it's interesting. In the financial world, 58% of clients left their advisors in 2020. 58%. I don't know about the county world, but it was ridiculous in the advisory world. We had the best year ever. COVID did one thing. COVID did not make or break your business. All COVID did was put a magnifying glass on your business structure. It showed you the strengths or weaknesses of your business. And if you are a strong business pre-COVID, then COVID gave you the opportunity to double down and work in different areas and drive maximum efficiency, profitability, ultimate value. On the other hand, if your business structure and systems were weak, then you saw dips in revenue, you had undue stress, you had undue pressure. So in us personally, we had an unbelievable year. And this year is even better than last year because of what we prepared going into COVID. But if, if listeners are having, man, this, I'm now scared about, you know, the second round of this perhaps that we might be dealing with, take a hard look at the structures of your business because that's the issue, not COVID, not the economy, not war, not Afghanistan, not the IRS. No, 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 no. That's all noise. Go back to the structure and the systems of the process. And I try to cover this in the book so that business owners can say, can look objectively at their business and say, I need help or here's some area for improvement. Right, right. No, I think that that's, I think that's important. And again, you know, you, you, you keep going back and so much of the stuff that you're saying are, are very good coaching points in the fact that you got to reflect back and you have to be able to step back and look at things. And if you're that tactician, you can't because you're too right. busy trying to make sure everything gets done and, and you're not, not able to kind of sit back and look at, look at the big picture now. Um, what, are, what are one of the big challenges that you're, that you're facing you know, right now as a business owner? Um, my business is worth a lot of money. My business, is, I get consistent offers weekly to buy my business. I built a national, I built a national presence that's far out kicked our coverage with the team that we have here and the systems and processes. One of the challenges I have is deciphering through the noise, be candid with you, I'm being completely transparent here and authentic, deciphering through the noise on what do I do? Do I continue to push lean into my dream a little bit or do I capitalize? Do I take some money off the table, join a partner? I've got VC firms, venture capital firms looking at me. So in my business, one of the challenges is trying to decipher the waves ahead of me. You know, I, like I said, I grew up on the ocean. Man, I love doing me saw offshore fishing and trying to read the waves sometimes is tough. Right. And right now the waves are, there's so much opportunity for truly structured businesses out there knowing which, which direction to take is very challenging. And that's as authentic as I can get. Yeah. You've given us a lot of, a lot of uh, good points. And, and I think a lot of things that, that the listeners really needed to hear um, what happened? I asked you that you wish I had so far. Hmm. Well, you didn't ask my favorite pizza. That'd be a meat lover's thin crust, New York style. Um, no, I'm joking. I mean, obviously we know pineapple doesn't belong on a pizza. Um, I would say what is the one, was the one thing I want to impress on anybody who's listened to this podcast. And that is this, you can't do it alone. There's an old African proverb that says this, it says, go fast go alone, go far, go together. 
we business owners are a stubborn lot. We're bullheaded. I'm right there with you. I'm, I mean, I'm charging hell with a water pistol. You can't tell me I can't do something. I'm going to tell you I can. And I'm going to go show you how to do it. And most of us are that way, which is why we're in business. And that's why we're successful. But in order for us to reach the ultimate goal, whatever it may be, and everybody's different, you're going to have to have a rock star dream team around you. You're going to need that board of advisors, people who are vested, that you pay, by the way, handsomely. Right. They need to be the most paid people in your life. You need an unbelievable tax, forward-thinking, tax-planning CPA that's razor sharp. You need an excellent business attorney. You need an excellent fiduciary comprehensive planner. That's not they're selling you insurance or investments. Comprehensive planner. You need a jam-up valuation expert. Put those on your board. Listen to them, lean on them, let them collaborate with each other. Let the CPA and the attorney and the advisor pay them to talk, put their brains together, and then implement what they come up and what you come up with. It's your baby. But many times your baby is not beautiful because we are the stubborn bunch. Mm -hmm. Let's make it beautiful, friends. Let's take our business, make them where they're best in class, where we all can have the opportunity to weigh a sale or a growth or a merger or perhaps just an annuitization of our business. That would be the area that I'd say, Gary. Great. So uh, I'm going to, you know, go out on a ledge here and say, okay, anybody who doesn't pick up your book and read your book and reach out to you as a fool. So <laughs> tell, tell our listeners, how can they get your book? How can they reach out to you? How can they you know, get onto your, you know, your podcast and, and everything. Cause I think that, that what you're providing is invaluable, uh, no matter what the price tag is. Sure. So you pick the book up on Amazon. It's on audible as well. If you want to listen to me for like seven hours, it's great. Just make sure you're not doing it on a trip because you might drive into a tree. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's on audible and you can pick up the book. Your baby's ugly on Amazon. Um, check out financially simple financiallysimple.com. And there we have a collaboration of articles that'll help you as a business owner. You can see if you're just starting, if you're trying to exit, if you're trying to build value, we have articles specifically written for you, the business owner. You can check out our podcasts on every area. We've won many, many, many awards through our podcast. I think it's over 400 episodes. And like I said, we give away everything. Take a look at Financially Simple is the name of the podcast. And you feel free to connect with me on social media. I'm aware on every channel. Just Google my name. You'll find it. It's everywhere. Great. I really appreciate your time. I think that our listeners today have gotten a lot from you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me. Wish everybody the best. So today our guest was uh, Justin Goodbread with uh, Heritage Investors and founder of Financially Simple. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.